Shalom everyone, this is Ty Green. Today there continues to be many opinions on the topic of abortion, the abandoning of childbirth. There are many layers involving the circumstances surrounding the decision to abandon the birth of a child. And what I'm going to share with you is not to shame anyone that has aborted a child. Past tense. This presentation is not about shaming anyone. Let's be clear about that. For there is love and forgiveness in God. Yet, moving forward from this point on, the world needs to know whether a line is crossed with God and why. And within that, you can see how this connects to you and involves all of us. Now, we've seen the protests and commentaries on both sides of this abortion topic with folks wanting their voices heard. Yet there is one voice that we all need to hear. There's one voice that we all need to listen to. The word of God. Does not the creator know more about us than we ourselves? Isaiah 55 verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Perhaps through scripture we can see a glimpse of the thoughts and ways of God concerning abortion. Let's look into the word of God and see if scripture can provide some clarity. Let's begin here, 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Folks want answers in regards to this issue. We expect the leadership within the church to lead and give direction toward the word of God and not remain silent. In addition, we ourselves must pick up the book and read it for ourselves. Some things within scripture are not easy to understand and can be interpreted differently. On the contrary, some things within scripture are very clear. Once we understand, the question becomes, what do we do next, right? You need to know that you matter. Every part of you. God loves you and he wants to be involved in every part of our lives. Our flesh, our bodies, our souls. Let's get into this. Let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 6 and let's pick it up at verse 16. When scripture says that the Lord hates the shedding of innocent blood, what does that mean? Let's read this. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16. These six things does the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaks lies, and he that sows discord among brethren. Hands that shed innocent blood appears to be cut and dry and straight to the point, is it really that simple? There's no circumstance, no condition, no exceptions, and this would apply to the action of any person, right? It's a clear statement of how the Lord feels about the shedding of innocent blood. It doesn't matter who does it. It doesn't matter why. The Lord hates the shedding of innocent blood. Is abandoning the birth of a child 
through abortion considered as the shedding of innocent blood? The answer may be clear to some, we just read it, but there is more to this. We've been desensitized to this shedding of innocent blood, even though one of the Ten Commandments speak to this, Exodus 20, 13, thou shalt not kill. We gain clarity that this killing is in regards to murder, homicide, the deliberate and unlawful killing of one person by another, murder. We note this is in fact the case as Jesus Christ says this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. The Greek word phoneo is the word used here. This is Strong's Concordance G5407 to be a murderer of kill, do murder, slay. The Thayer lexicon says to kill, slay, murder to commit murder. Look at this root word phoneus. In its Strong's Concordance, G5406, look at this, a murderer, always of criminal, or at least intentional. Then we see the word homicide. The Thayer lexicon goes on to say a murderer, a homicide. See, the shedding of innocent blood, the deliberate and unlawful killing of one person by another. But is what's inside of a womb a living being or is this not the case until the birth? What does the Bible say about the value of life inside of the womb? There's an example within scripture where if two men are fighting and somehow injure a pregnant woman and then the baby is lost, the penalty is a life for a life. Most people have heard the figure of speech, an eye for an eye. Well, this is the passage of scripture that it comes from, Exodus chapter 21. Let's pick this up in verse 22. You are going to see something very interesting. If men strive and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart from her and yet no mischief follow, he shall be surely punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. And if any mischief follow, then you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. Now I want you to see this again from the word for word translation in the interlinear Bible from the Hebrew. Remember, Hebrew reads from the right to the left. Look at this. And if men fight, and hurt a pregnant woman so that prematurely she gives birth and yet no harm follows, surely he shall be punished according as on him imposes the husband of the woman and he shall pay as the judges determine. Now look at verse 23. But if any harm follows, then you shall give life for life eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, and so on. See that? If there's a premature birth and the baby is okay, there is a sure punishment to follow. The husband is involved in this process as well. Then we see that the offender shall pay as the judges determine. But if that baby dies, there's a death penalty a life for a life. Here within scripture, we see that it didn't matter the growth stage of the child in the womb. It didn't matter the circumstances in which the child was in 
the womb, it's a clear observation that there is value in the innocent life inside the womb. Whether on purpose or by an accident, when an innocent life is terminated, it is a very serious offense to God. And as Jesus said, thou shalt not kill and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Thus far, we can see how abortion qualifies as sin against the will of God. We are indeed valuable to God even before we are born. There's way more to this. Let's keep going. Moreover, any person that is paid to take an innocent life is cursed. Deuteronomy 27, 25. Cursed be he that takes reward to slay an innocent person. And all the people shall say, Amen. So be it. Here again, it doesn't matter the age, the circumstances doesn't even matter. If there is financial gain from taking the life of an innocent person, that person doing it is cursed. They are guilty. Whether having an abortion or performing the procedure, there's only one atonement for sin, Jesus Christ. A deeper element to this as we've touched on the physical part of our being inside of a mother's womb. Now there's a big debate on when life begins, yet folks disregard the fact that man is more than flesh and blood. God made man with a spirit. This gets into the innocent life inside the womb. Look at this, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 44. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. So when does the child in the womb receive the spiritual body? It is indeed a part of life. Can anyone answer this? When does the child in the womb receive the spiritual body? None of us know the answer, but God does. So when a child inside of the womb is deemed innocent by God, we need to know that we're in a terrible offense when innocent life is taken. Scripture says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. We note this from Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11 and verse 14. But I want to share a bit more on the fact that before our flesh was formed in our mother's womb, we were yet alive. Look at this. Psalms 139 verses 13 through 16 from the interlinear Bible. This translates the Hebrew into English word for word. As we read this, remember that the Hebrew is read from the right to the left. In English, of course, we read from the left side to the right side. We're going to see something interesting. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in the womb of my mother. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. My substance being yet unformed, your eyes saw and in your book all the days they were written, fashioned for me, when as yet they were not one of them. So before we were born, before our first day out of the womb, before our substance was formed, God saw us all of the days of our lives already written, fashioned for you, 
fashioned for me. This verifies that God has a purpose for each of us from the very start. This is deep, y'all. I want to go back to this part where it says, my substance being yet unformed. Watch this real close. Look at what this Hebrew word for this unformed substance is. And it's found within scripture only once. Look at this. This right here. Strong's Concordance H1564 Golem. It means an embryo. So even at the embryonic stage of life, God is involved before the heart of the baby develops and pumps the blood of life. We have already been identified as being alive with a plan already fashioned for our very lives. Our lives have more value to God than we could ever know. And this is just a glimpse. There is an intimate connection between God and man. He formed us in the womb. Now we can see just a little bit better that the formation of us involves more than just the formation of the physical body. We see this in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 24. Thus says the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that forms thee from the womb. I am the Lord that makes all things, that stretches forth the heavens alone and spreads abroad the earth by myself. So how do we think God feels when we interrupt this innocent life forming in the womb? Jesus warned us that judgment is a response, not only individually, but collectively, not only physically, but spiritually. Once again, before our flesh formed in the womb of our mothers, God knew us. This means that there is more than flesh and blood at work here. How can God know us before we are formed in our mother's womb? It's one more account right here that life exists prior to the birth of a child exiting the womb. Jeremiah chapter one. Let's pick it up at verse four. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. See that? For those in Christ, we note this clear existence of our body and our spirit and it belongs to God. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 19. What know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God and you are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. So every life is valuable, every life. In the cases of rape and incest, every life is valuable and proper care and support must be provided on various levels for everyone involved, everyone. There must be justice for the offended the abused and neglected. God is concerned about every life, loved, nurtured, and cared for. I hope that this brief study points out that there is more to consider in regards to the value of life inside the womb. The question is whether man will consider what God says in his word and follow it up 
with action. Will mankind turn to God in any circumstance and say, God, direct my steps. Help me make the decision that honors you. Will God not provide for you? Will God not avenge you? Will the Lord not be there for you when everyone else has walked away? This is between you and God. Will you honor him? We've read how life is important to him. What's important to him should be important to us. Do you think that God somehow doesn't understand what's going on here? When you meet God, what will you say? We are all without excuse. His word within scripture makes it plain. Tough topic, but it must be shared. I'm going to leave it right here. Till we meet again, live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom.